not separate from this love. We're going to sing, I'm here, ready to love. I'm here to love.
Yes, I am so grateful to be here this morning. Welcome everyone in the sanctuary and to everyone out on Zoom. This is Ben Iloff reporting live from the pulpit at Unity Midtown Tulsa. Ah, man, this is where I get re refreshed and recharged every week and I'm so glad to be here. Um, so this morning we have Jeff Statton with us, Reverend Jeff Statton. He's going to be talking about uh, playing with paradox, and that sounds fun because it sounds like my life, uh, which I'm sure will be revealed. Uh, and also, on October 21st is our membership orientation. Um, that'll be from 10 to noon, and there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer, and uh, so if you haven't done so, please, please join our, our beautiful community. And we invite you to do that. Um, there is a new book club study, uh, Soul Boom, which is Rain Wilson, uh, Dwight, I believe, on The Office, right? Is that, yeah? And a uh, funny guy. I actually just ordered my copy. It started uh, October 12th. It's four weeks from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., and again, there's a sign up in the foyer for that. It meets at Barnes and Noble at 41st and uh, South Roads, 41st and Yale. And also, um, there's not a lot of announcements today. Uh, our email addresses, uh, well, to have changed. Uh, so please begin using uh, admin Tulsa or admin at TulsaUnity.org and Rev Shauna at TulsaUnity.org. Uh, the old email will transfer for a little while. They used to be .coms, and we've switched over to uh, .orgs. So with that, um, let's stay in that place of gratitude and, and appreciation and enter into a place of reflection as Emma, Wor uh, Emma's gonna Emma Word, Emma Kate's going to come up and share the daily word with us. Thank you. Good morning. Where's my page? You know what? I have it right here in my pocket. Today's word is generous. Let us all affirm together the abundance of the world flows through me. I am securely in the flow of prosperity when I receive graciously and gratefully and share my abundance generously. Whatever I share with a loving, giving heart blesses me as much as it blesses the one who receives it. Each time I share of my supply, I am demonstrating my trust that I will always have what I need. When I share of myself, I am living my faith that I am a divine being empowered with a limitless supply of divine ideas. The richness of an abundant universe flows through me. Knowing this, I don't hesitate to be generous so others will know the abundance of the world as I know it. Through my giving, May they also know the blessings of the awesome power and grace of God as they bless me daily. Our scripture is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. The abundance of the world flows through me. Thank you, God. Amen. What better place, what better time than to move into a moment of quiet? 
into this place of reflection, into this place of knowing that despite the storms that swirl around us in this world today, that we can truly find our core of peace. So I invite you, if you feel comfortable, to allow your eyes to close and feel your entire body firmly supported not only by the seats and by the floor, but by the energy in this room. That just holds you. And so we connect to this majestic river, this flow of love and abundance. flow of abundance is present not only in resources, but also in love and patience and kindness. In the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, it is said, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. And so as the creative beings that we are, we go now into this moment to contemplate that there is room in our awareness for sadness and joy. There is room in our awareness for doubt and faith. And that as we navigate this willingness to be in the flow of the one love, the one life, the one power, that out of this comes creative solutions to all of our discomfort. And so I invite you now to breathe in with me a full, big, full-hearted breath, letting it go. Breathing in again, this wonderful energy in the room, breathing it in and letting it go. And we allow Charlotte to take us gently into the quiet and we breathe.
and gently returning to this space. Bringing gratitude for those moments of quiet. I sometimes feel I could just stay there return to the energy of this community. This unity of Tulsa Midtown Fellowship. And so wiggle your toes and wiggle your fingers and when ready, allow your eyes to open. Seeing with those eyes the beauty in this room Dealing with your heart, the willingness and understanding to be more than what we see, knowing that we are grace and love and perfection, and oh, in this time, it is so needed. So with gratitude, we come fully present to let it be, and so it is.
Yes, yes, yes. You know, Charlotte and Ben and I have known each other for a few years, um, and like to be able to share the platform with you all today is magnificent. And um, there's just so much going on in the world today. It feels so good to just let the heart open up a little bit, to feel into this. You know, like we, choose, we chose to be here today. Another choice would have been to stay home and watch the news, <laughs> right? And I don't shy away from what's happening in the world because it is an emanation of the energy that we are all putting out into this global primordial soup of life. But to come here in community the way we are today is on our own small and mighty and magnificent way making a difference in the energy in the world today. So this talk we're going to be navigating through is about the paradox. Like Charlotte said, you know, what we give, we receive. And we're navigating the world seeing so many contradictory things, right? Like we know we're all love. This teaching is one. This new thought teaching is one that says there is only one. Then how come it looks so darn different? How come there are people hurting and slaughtered and fearful and kidnapped? As we speak, come back to the fact that we are but one. So we can bring this energy of peace and love and faith and wholeness in the midst of these appearances of separation from one. That's the gift that we have in this new thought teaching that we share here at Unity and have for decades. To know that in the moments in between, we can settle on the power of the one. Now, it was about two weeks ago when I was, I was reading a book and it was about social justice movement. And it wasn't about moving out and protesting in the world, it was about taking out the mirror to first do the inner work. That it's not our goal to go out and change, it's not to go out there and do things for others, it all begins with us. And I thought, wow, I was looking for a practical book on how to make a difference in the world. And it comes back to what I know, what I've been teaching, what I believe, which is all starts with the quiet. So this call for me was to deepen in my meditation practice, to make space, even if it's just a few moments before leaping off into the tasks of the world, to center in the quiet. And meditation, for those who practice it, and it is a practice, it's always perfect. Even if there are distractions pulling us and calling us, if the monkey mind is going, that the courage comes to the commitment to sit first in the quiet, to be willing to just be grounded and quiet and listen. The other call in this book was to go and, go and do the inner work, do the journaling. So I dusted off my old journal and started writing just to see what came out. And I thought, well, I don't know what this is all about, but a reminder to get back to meditation and to journaling is always a good thing. And then last week came the terrorist attacks from Hamas in Israel. And I could be drawn into that, to a place of fear and worry and piling on, I could be drawn into that to a place of retribution and anger. And not any of these things are right or wrong. They are. We're humans having this experience. I could be drawn into this to a place of taking of sides. And taking of sides may be warranted in the practical space of who did what to whom. But instead, what I realized, it's important, and I encourage everyone to come back to the center, to take a moment to commune with that energy of love that we know to be true. We believe that we are indeed all one. 
So from that one comes the many expressions. And we, as creative beings, putting our energy into the world, have influence and impact on that. So let's remember that today, that we have that. Now, paradox is the ability to hold two seemingly opposing thoughts in mind at the same time. I forgot I had some notes here. In the book Atlas of the Heart by Brene Brown, <clears throat> she defines paradox as the appearance of contradiction between two related components. And we find paradoxes everywhere in our world. Right there in that prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Paradox is perhaps, the most extreme example of paradox is perhaps war and love. And keep in mind that the human mind was created <laughs> with either or thinking. It served us well back in the days when we were uh, you know, looking over the corner to see if there was a predator about to pounce on us. And that's in our DNA. But we must then shift from that either or thinking, think, shift away from right or wrong, either or, and instead move into playing with the idea of paradox. Now, as this talk was being prepared, an Instagram post from Bruce Springsteen came up. And it was Bruce waxing poetic about paradox. I thought, how interesting is that? He said, you need to be mindful of the fact that a song can be both prideful and critical. I thought, absolutely, there's paradox in so many of the songs that we hear. Now, Bruce wrote this song, Born in the USA, a prideful anthem for waving the fat flag or not. <laughs> right? It can have a powerful anthem of pride and at the same time be critical of the way our veterans returned and are treated in this country. So we can love our country, we can love our whatever and be critical of it at the same time. So as we explore paradox this week, we look at the polarities that are, exist in our life and knowing that attachment to one or another often causes suffering. We must be willing to remain open to understanding alternative perspectives and then we'll find a third way to navigate through. It's said that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Yet so we often we get caught up in only one perspective. Even, for example, if we are so focused on oneness and the big picture and sit in meditation and prayer and say everything's great when it sure doesn't feel that way, then we're missing out on opportunities to reach out and love and support each other. Then if we get caught up in the suffering and challenges of the world, then we forget the divinity and we're missing out on the joy of feeling infinite and eternal. So often we stand on the side of one polarity or another and our language matches that. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Coffee or tea? Democrat or Republican? Do you like cats or dogs? Are you an introvert or an extrovert? I'm a big picture person, but my boss always focuses on the details. Polarities. Our entire society can be based on picking a side, even when you don't fit on either side. Once we've chosen our side, whether it's a preference, belief system, way of thinking, or a call to action, we then begin to see only the beliefs in our side and only the defects of the other side. We can see this in almost every major debate and worldview of our time right now, right at the heart and the core of the Hamas-Israeli conflict. Let's think for a moment just across off the, the country to the east of our Congress. Think of the disagreement with a neighbor or a loved one or a Facebook acquaintance. Life is so much more nuanced and magical when we can see through these polarities. Now, there are even differences within our New Thought teaching, and I have an interesting 
example to share of that. There are some people in this teaching who I call are like metaphysical evangelicals, right? I am never going to see the discord in the world because I know that we are all one. And if I bring up a discord, I get shamed <laughs> for having a crappy day. Now, my spouse is a new thought metaphysical evangelical who practices this stuff all the time. So I'm exaggerating there. But we were going for a walk, walking the dog the other day. And I, for many years, have had this great airline priority status where I get to board first. Okay? It's been a great thing to have. Well, I, get, I, I shifted and I moved from being a customer of the airline to an employee of the airline. Okay? And what happened there is my status, which I earned last year while, an, while, uh, while a customer, will expire in December. And I lamented to Kim, I said, oh, what will I do without having the privilege of boarding early on every flight and not having to check in 24 hours prior? And she goes, what do you mean? I said, well, it ends in December and I don't have enough points to get it next year because I don't pay for my tickets anymore. She said, well, if you want to believe that, go right ahead. So my, when, when we have the conversation like this, my blood pressure goes up a little. And I want to say something not so nice. So I said, so then I start to explain it a little bit. Well, you know that, da, 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 everything I just told you. She goes, okay, well, if you want to believe that, then go right ahead. She could tell, like, my tension was getting. I started walking faster. And then eventually we changed the subject because I didn't say the things that I often say. Because, why? I know that what she's saying is true. Right? I'm a minister. I teach these things. I know that it is done to me as I believe. And I also know in a practical standpoint, you've got to do X, Y, and Z to get that. Right? And this isn't a life or death thing. I'm fine without it. I don't have a commitment to it. I can live with or without that status. It was just a nice to have thing. So I fly down to Dallas to spend my day in the office and my boss says, hey, I've got some news for you all. I'm like, what's that? And he said, the company has decided that all of you who fly for business so frequently, we're going to go ahead and give you a status point for every flight you do. I was like, Kim, you there? <laughs> oh my goodness. So on Wednesday of this week, I look at my app and guess what? I have the highest level of status because of how many free flights I did for work. And the company has decided to reward me for being away from home, even though I didn't go buy tickets and earn those points by being a regular frequent flyer. And I was like, son of a gun. What a great little lesson about being able to hold two seemingly opposite things at the same time. Here's Kim telling me in the absolute, and here's me knowing that there, there's, no, like, there's no way in the world that's going to happen. So when we say a prayer for something like peace on earth, and then we let it go, which is putting it into the creative medium, that we call God, that we know responds to our prayers. So if it can do that for something as little as getting status, despite my cynicism about that, but my willingness to let it go, which I did, out of that comes a little, little sign from that indwelling thing that I call God that says, remember this, my friend. Remember this when there is a prayer for anything to hold lightly to the outcome of the prayer. To not plant the seed in the fertile soil, the creative medium of God, wait five minutes and dig it back up to see if it's sprouted yet, and to let it go. Like the things that we say we want, if I something, want something desperately in the world, like peace or that status, it's... it's what we resist persists, if I heard that phrase, right? So if I'm, if I'm resisting the fact that I don't believe, if I say, I want that desperately, I don't believe it can happen, then it's not going to happen. 
if I align with the one perfect life, if I speak my word of prayer or feel this word of prayer saying, okay, maybe she's right. <laughs> maybe she's reflecting back to me what I know to be true despite everything in my body saying, ah, take a breath and let it go. And watch the magnificent that comes out of that possibility. And I think for a moment that where we have to be careful with polarities is being open to the vulnerability of being wrong, self-assessing and changing our worldviews, and not doubling down on the polarity. Like that's what we're seeing in our government today. People who feel very strongly about their positions like, not only do we have polarities between Democrats and Republicans or left and right, we have polarities within the conference that say, I want this or that. And I will not even open my eyes to the possibility of something else. Okay? We, what happens there is nothing gets done, right? Nothing happens except for more anger and frustration with more angst and uncertainty. So what we can do in the midst of that, this is what Ernest Holmes said, keep the doorway of your mind open. Feeling, thinking, communing with this life, know that it fills you with light and with power. Rather than forcing ourselves into a single side of polarity or swinging back and forth between those sides, let's commit to finding a third way another way through this, right? There's another way, and that is by coming back to what I said in the beginning. Let's close our eyes. Let's spend time in the quiet. And let's remember that we are indeed one. So I invite you to that journey, even if it's just a breath before that cup of warm tea and feeling good. Know that the energy of love is right there. Send it out to our friends and our neighbors, to our so-called enemies, to the wars and rumors of wars, to know that love and peace are possible now. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Jeff. I love you. I just want to recognize Rachel here singing with us. We're so happy to have her here. She's got such a beautiful voice. She graced us last week, so I don't know how it turned out on the live, but if you haven't seen her song from last week, you can go on online and watch it.
service when we focus on our prayer box. For those of you who may be new to the church, we do have a prayer box where you can put your concerns and your desires for the church prayers. They are prayed on here and then they are sent to Unity Village where they are prayed on for another 30 days. So if you have those concerns, please avail yourself of the prayer box. But now we are going to focus our group attention, our collective attention, on praying for these concerns. When we are concerned enough about someone or something or a situation to put them in the prayer box, we want to collectively support each other in knowing that God is in and all things, in and through all things, all situations. And there is nothing in this world that enough love cannot heal. That divine order is present in all things. And sometimes it just takes another way of looking at it for us to find peace. Sometimes it requires something from us to do, but more often it requires us just to witness. To witness, to allow, to love, and to share our peace. And so in this moment, we do just that. For all the peoples whose names are in that box, for all the concerns in this church and the community of the church, for those living in Ukraine, Israel, the Gaza Strip, the inner cities of the United States, War can be physical and war can be emotional and either one can be healed with enough love. And for this understanding, we do give thanks. Father, Mother, loving God, amen. Thank you, Chris. I just love it when Chris prays. It's just so peaceful. It just takes us to the place. I just want to say all is well. So thank you. Thank you, Chris. I'm Rennie, and this is the time in our service where we receive our, our financial gifts. And I reflect on giving a lot. Uh, why do I give? Because I can but it's always such a blessing to, to sow seed. We're talking about sowing seed into this spiritual community, a community that 
I get back 30-fold, 60-fold, 90-fold. And it's just a blessing to be a part of this where every Sunday I can come home to be with my family. You all mean the world to me because we are one. So I invite you now to hold your gift in your hand. And let's say our offering affirmation together. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, for so it is. we've given as individuals or individual families let's receive these gifts as a spiritual community I invite you to pray with me loving creator we say thank you we thank we thank you because we know anything is possible and that all things are possible we know that everything that we accomplish and that we do is because you are our source. And for that we say, thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. Now I'm looking back. See, you all don't have eyes. I don't see kids back there. I don't think we have kids. Is that right? We do have kids. Are they coming? Let the kids come forth. I feel like Moses. Are they coming? They're coming. Walking in the light. On here, are we here, Jessica? As I fall off here, will you tell us what you all have been doing? We're talking about how God is all, uh, all powerful and all present. And today we talked about how hurtful things cloud our vision, and how using our God self makes it a little clear. How cool ah. is that? And we all agree about that. Yes. So let's go ahead, let's bless our kids, shall we? Together. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. God loves you, and we love you, just the way you are. And we would like to have a blessing as well. Congregation, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. 
God loves you, and we love you just the way you are. Wonderful. Thank you. Stand as you're able. Let's join hands and let's sing the peace song. coffee and fellowship, let's say our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever you are, God is, and all is well. Thank you for being with us. Enjoy the coffee. Have a wonderful week. We can't wait to see you next week.